Church fam, welcome to this week's episode of The Breakdown. This is episode four, and hey, we hope that you're having such an amazing time experiencing The Breakdown as we are here hosting it. And I want to give a shout out to our production team who's been doing such an incredible job at putting this all together. I feel like we just get to sit up here and talk, and, and they're back there just creating all of the special moments that we all get to enjoy. And so again, we want to welcome you tonight. Uh, this past Sunday's message uh, that we're going to break down here tonight was shared by one of our executive pastors, Pastor Mark Lovato, a.k.a. the People's Champ, a.k.a. the Brown Mamba, uh, a.k.a. I, okay, maybe I made that last one up. Um, but it was such a, a cool message. He titled it The Second Win or Second Win. And we're going to break it down tonight with our guests. But before we go there into the notes and before we kind of lead into the conversation, we're going to ask just some fun fact questions about you guys really quick. So uh, Gloria and Josh, I'm going to just kind of pair the questions to you guys together. What is your favorite, like, go-to nighttime snack and why? We'll ask you first, Gloria. <laughs> Anything that has to do with, like, chocolate or sugar. Okay. Like, sometimes I like to roast marshmallows over the stove. Hey, yeah, come on. <laughs> and then That's I'll how take, you like, do it. And then I'll kisses and nice. put them in, like, my drawer next to my bed. So when I don't want to get up, I could just, like, reach over and grab one. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Okay. Yeah. Definitely my go-to. My wife can agree here. Good old-fashioned PB&J sandwich. Nice. Can't go wrong with that. You can, you can, you can toast the bread. <laughs> you can have it out of the fridge. <laughs> with a glass of milk or... Glass of milk is mandatory. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. And I, and I put ice in my milk. Oh, Y'all okay. might think that's weird. I just like I it. I like my milk cold. <laughs> so mine, mine is actually graham crackers and milk. Like, not just like two, though. I, I'll crush a whole, <laughs> the whole pack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And not the snack size one, like the full on, you know what I'm <laughs> saying? Family size one. <laughs> All right. So we'll ask Oscar and Vanessa, um, what is your guys's? We'll, we'll, we'll throw a, a spiritual fun question out there. What is your guys' favorite Bible character and why? Oh, wow. That's a tough one for me. I love them all. But I would say Paul. I love Paul. Okay. Yep. All right. Why? Any kind of background you know, on I, You know, just Paul's determina de determination, his discipline, his love for God. And one of the biggest and special moments of this is when he had his encounter with God. So when he, mm. Jesus encountered him and he fell off his horse, yeah, yeah, it, yeah. Was a, it was a big moment. So, yeah, that's why. Okay, love that. All right, Vanessa. I would say Esther. Actually, I think we're going to start reading her soon in the one-year Bible. And All I'll right. speak yes. as a woman. I'll say Esther because uh -huh. she was highly favored. She nice. was put in a position that only God could place her in. And she got everyone to rally mm. against with her and fast with her and pray for breakthrough. Yeah. So I think she's a great example for women. Awesome. Very cool. All right, and come on, in the chat right now, why don't you give a shout-out to all of our guests here tonight, Gloria, Oscar, Josh, and Vanessa Valdez. We love you guys. Thank you for joining us tonight. So this past me message with Pastor Mark, as I said, a.k.a. XP, we're going to start calling him the Brown Mamba. I think we need to stick. <laughs> I like that I like one. We should stick with that one. Yeah. I'm in all right, cool. With you. I'm in agreement. So he preached the message, um, second win. He gave the example or the analogy of a marathon runner, and how at about the 20-mile mark, they experience just this radical fatigue mentally, physically. But then he, he described the runners, how they'll have this sudden, like, moment of empowerment that, like, breaks through. And they're able to push and, like, keep going on to not just finish the race, but actually finish it with, with less exertion. And I love what he said. He, he said that Jesus understands that life is a marathon and he offers a second win to those of us who realize we've hit the wall, like I'm ready to quit, I'm ready to give up, and and that allows us to keep moving forward. And so uh, I'm going to throw out the first question to, to Miss Gloria. I'm going to ask you, what did it take for you to learn in your faith journey that that this isn't a sprint, but it's a marathon? gosh okay so this I just realized this last year so okay. I've been a Christian for like seven years but okay. I've been here at Heart Rev for five nice and I just had this revelation last year I was at a um I was at a worship night mm. and I met a pastor there he doesn't know me doesn't know anything about me yeah and he was like hey I don't know you but I'm coming to tell you as like an older brother he was like that God is telling me to tell you that you need to live 
by God's grace, not mm. for God's grace. Wow. He said, you have a lot of talents and you can do a lot of things and you feel like you need to operate in all of them at the same time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you need to realize that you can't work for God's grace. You can't work for God's glory. Just because he died for you doesn't mean that you owe him the rest of your life to work for him. Mm. There's a difference between working for something and serving to yeah. give back. And um, that really made me like step back and like open my eyes to so much about God and how he's come into my life. And even though I've, I can say like, oh my gosh, yeah, I know about the Bible. I know about God. I know about the faith seven years in, mm. but then this was like a reality check of like, no, 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 no. This is not a race. Like yeah. this is not, there is no like finish line. Mm. We say here at Heart Rev that we're not perfect, but we strive to like be perfected. Yeah, absolutely. And there's only one person that was ever perfect, and that was Jesus. And I tell myself that I will never be perfect. And in order to be perfect is when we get called back to heaven and God yeah. says, like, Amen. I'm pleased with you. So that yeah. means that this marathon is a lifetime. So until the day that we die, that's when we're Come finally on. perfect. Yeah, that's yeah, when yeah. we're like, yeah. we've achieved our mission. Yeah. So that's something that I tell my girls and I tell my friends, like, don't work for God's grace. Yeah, it's yeah, by yeah. God's grace that you get to work, that you mm. get to serve, that you get to operate in the talents that you have. Yeah, and there's yeah. a season for every talent that he's given. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, put in the chat some, some running emojis with some smoke running behind you. <laughs> We're running from grace, not for grace. I love that. Thank you for sharing. Um, so he read from Matthew chapter 11, 28 through 30, and you kind of set this up really nicely. And so I'm going to actually read it from the message version. And, he, and, and it says, are you tired, worn out, burned out on religion? Come to me, get away with me, and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. And I want to ask you, Josh, what does that mean for you? And we're going to read the rest of that verse. But what does it mean for you to, to take a real rest, like in this marathon of life? I think just having the, the model of our pastors and the leaders that we have here at Heart Rev Church, mm. um, really teaching that there's power in your pause, Yeah. right? And when Pastor Abe talked about that, um, that really spoke to me because there really is power in your pause. Knowing when to sit back yeah. and to just be still. And I know being still sometimes is like one of the hardest things that yeah. we can do, right? Because <laughs> we always want to do, we're like, we yeah, live in yeah, a society yeah. where we're just everything's go, 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 right? So, right. Um, but really it's being still and listening to the voice of God because we trust God with so many other things. Yeah. And so, but when it comes to like, the Bible says, you know, lean not on your own understanding. Mm. And I like that because it, it's, it's a check, it's a gut check and it's a reminder that we need to hit the pause button. And, you know, Thankfully, God has given me the Holy Spirit in a human form. Come my wife now. is my hey, Holy Spirit. So on, she mama. reminds me as well that, hey, you know what, honey? Don't forget to pause. Don't forget to Hit breathe. Hit the brakes. Hit the brakes. Yes. So, um, yeah, that's definitely, you know, how it's worked for, for myself. Awesome. Okay. So cool. Um, so the rest of the verse says, walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me, and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. And so I, I want to ask, um, I'll ask you, Oscar, like how has the un unforced rhythms of grace allowed you to live freely and lightly? And, and even what does like that mean to you? And I love how you set it up, you know, with the grace. And, and like, has, have you ever seen people dance with no rhythm? Like, are you, you've heard people clapping, <laughs> you hear people clapping in church and like, it's all on beat and you hear that one like, psh, psh, and it's like all off beat and you're like, what is that? You know what I mean? But so like, there's, there's an unforced rhythm to grace. Like if you're working for it instead of working from it, you're like, you're going to be tired, exhausted. And, and so like, what does that mean for you? Those unforced rhythms of grace that just are, are propelling you forward in your walk with God. And I love what Gloria said, um, because, uh, you know, for a long time, it was me. You know, I thought that I can work for God, that I was yeah. working for God. But yeah. and, and it's not until I realized to live a life of grace. And I even had a conversation with Josh a few months ago. And, you know, the Spirit spoke to me through him about grace. Mm. And grace is huge in a Christian life. And to lead by grace. Yeah. That no yeah. there's, And I tell this to my kids and I tell this to people. There is nothing you can do. Yeah. There's nothing you can do to win God's favor. His trust, he loves you, he trusts you. You're at 100% all the time. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. it's living a life, leading with grace, knowing that 
you are going to fall. You are going to make yeah, mistakes. Absolutely. You are going to say the wrong thing to your wife, and you <laughs> might have to sleep on the couch. But <laughs> Keep it real. Come on. You know what I mean? But lead with grace. Grace is the yeah. most important thing in the Christian life is knowing grace. Yeah. Mm. Good. Beautiful. So th- back to kind of this, the analogy of the marathon runner. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever seen a marathon race, but you've seen – you know, where the people are like, they're holding out the cups of water and like they're, 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 you know, they're, they're those people. And I always wondered myself, like, how do those people get there anyways? Like, you know what I mean? And like, how did they, did they just pick up a cup on their way there? Or, um, so I don't know if you guys watch Seinfeld or not. I don't know if you guys have ever seen that. No, she's like, that's a Are old we talking show. about the marathon in uh, New York? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Manhattan v- yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So this, this episode is this marathon's runner. He's running. I won't go into the whole episode, but he, he reaches out for a cup of water, but it's actually a cup of hot tea of Kramer and he drinks it of, of Kramer's, uh, he's holding the cup and you hear the guy screaming, like, you know what I mean? Cause he burned himself. He thought it was water. So I, I want to ask you, uh, Vanessa, as you're kind of like, you know, I know that you're a hardworking uh, woman, you're a, a wife, a mother, and, and so you're a leader here in our church. And, and for you, I mean, there's so many things that you're kind of running in, you know what I mean, in different roles of your life. And so I know that we can at times maybe reach for the wrong thing that may burn us instead of kind of hydrating us. So I guess I'll like ask you, when do you know it's time to like reach out for a leader, you know, to kind of. I guess we'll say spiritually hydrate you. You know what I mean? Uh, like, h- how have you learned to know, like, hey, I need to reach out. You know what I mean? It kind of allows something to be fed into my own life. And that's really a good question. And I think Pastor Mark even talked about that at service yesterday in the evening where he said, you know, you can be doing really well. You yeah. can be doing really well. Right. You can be killing it at your job. You know, your kids are behaving and yeah, the yeah, marriage yeah. is good. And, you know, your girls are calling you and all <laughs> that. But sometimes the weariness hits you, mm. right? And so when you have those moments of weariness, of course, you know, we're, we're to go to God, you know, and mm. ask him to replenish us. Yeah. And sometimes we find ourselves in seasons where, like, the worship music we were listening to doesn't really hit yeah. us the same way. <laughs> like, we can read the one-year Bible, and it's more like a check mark. you know, my Christian mm. check box. This yeah. is I'm checking everything off. But, you know, that's a, a pause button for me is to be like, whoa, I feel a little dry. Mm. And I need to call. I need to reach out. Yeah. And of course, I need to go to God. But I also need to reach out to my pastors that are yeah, here, the women, good. the yeah. many wells, the tias, you know, that we have here at the church. <laughs> spiritual tias. The spiritual tias. The spiritual tias. Yes, the- spiritual tias. Thank you for putting me in check all the time and calling me in an on-time word. So, yes. But that's so important to do that because we can look really well on the outside like we're doing so good. But on the, in some t- in, on the inside, sometimes we do grow weary. Yeah. Um, and it's okay, but but in one moment, in one word, in one new revelation, in, in a scripture that you're reading, yeah. you know, God will give you f- that second win. Yeah. You just have to throw yourself in the things of God, mm-hmm. really. Come on. Yeah, yeah. Well, and uh, Gloria, I'll kind of maybe transition to you w- with the kind of same question. Um, have you ever had where you did reach, you know what I mean? And like you were like, oh, that wasn't the right thing to maybe replenish me. That wasn't the right thing, you know. How have you, I mean, you don't have to go in too deep, but like what was something you've experienced to be like, I don't need to reach for that or, or you know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. How, how did that happen? Um, I feel like that happens to me a lot. <laughs> and that's just because like I'm learning. It's all right. <laughs> I'm learning with friends. I'm learning with like, um, I'm an introvert. So like it's hard for me to okay. like communicate in a healthy way. <laughs> so I'm surrounding myself with positive people. And sometimes like I've learned that when I do it based off of my own judgment, mm. that's when I get burned. I, instead of like looking and having that discernment, I yeah, just kind of yeah, yeah. go for it because I trusted my gut and I mm. didn't trust God. Yeah. So um, I can say like right now in my season, I've experienced something where I trusted my gut and I did it off of my own strength. Yeah. And I was kind of like that runner where like, oh, everyone's doing it. I'm just <laughs> trusting like chug it, you know, and then it's just hot tea. Yeah. And it was, you know, like this fire and um i think that we need to appreciate those moments because it kind of wakes you up and you're like oh yeah snap. like that was all me that wasn't god mm. that wasn't the enemy that was all me yeah and um i think one thing that i've learned the most now is that when we when we experience those things instead of kind of like drowning and letting that like mm. overwhelm you and like 
sit in that dark cloud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of like gain a new perspective and go after that second win and allow God to put you in that position. Mm. Um, So I've allowed myself to like, instead of sit in here in like heartbreak and saying like, oh, I can't trust anybody because this and this and this happened. I've allowed God to put the right people and instead of him giving me one person for the one person that I lost, he gave me more. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And that made me realize that, okay, if he would have done it the other way around, I wouldn't have appreciated everything that he gave me at mm. first if it was good. So the way that's just me in specific. That's just the way that I learn. I have to learn the hard way and sure. kind of see the snake in, in the bush <laughs> for me to believe that it's there. And that's just my relationship with God where he's like, look, Miha, I'm going to show you how not to do yeah, it yeah. so that when it comes back around, you can tell the difference between what is you and what is me. Mm. So, yeah. that's Yeah, me. and I, I really appreciate what you said about how it's not just one person. And I feel like we can at times, and, and you can hear even people, like they only have one voice in their life, and they kind of almost, that becomes almost their God, yeah. where the Bible says that wisdom is found in a multitude of counsel, yeah. you know, but also the correct counsel, yeah. you know what I mean? So you learn like, sure. hey, you know, I tried that relationship with that person, kind of burned me, you know what I mean? But yeah. I'm going to, I'm gonna, doesn't mean I'm going to stop reaching, but right. I just learn from it. You experience it and being like, okay, but I need to have multiple people that yeah. I can reach out to. Yeah. So... Um, so Pastor Mark shared, and back to the weariness, a question of, of he, he shared the story or a story of Moses, Joshua, Elisha, you know, people who were being used by God. And, and, and you know, it says uh, the scriptures he read from Elisha and Moses both basically said, like, God, like, kill me now. Like, I'm done. I'm yeah. through. <laughs> that's pretty like, <laughs> man, that's pretty gnarly, right? Like, kill me now, right? I'm, I'm done. And, you know, yeah. he read from Joshua where it said, you know, we should have been satisfied with where we were. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? We should have never crossed over the Jordan. Like we, sh- we should have just been, you know, satisfied with where we were. Like, you know, we just need to quit. And so um, he, I love what he said. He said, have you ever felt like quitting on something God has blessed you with? Mm-hmm. And so I want to ask you guys kind of as a, as a couple, um, so another back to, to, to the runner is a way. And I looked this up because I was wondering how to like, how do you like become one of those people to pass out the water? <laughs> <laughs> and there was like 11 tips on how to be like a supporter, like a oh runner supporter, gosh. like at they're a marathon. Serious. And yeah. it said that one of the things you can do is actually join the runner. Like as long as you're not breaking yeah. the rules and like tripping other runners, <laughs> like, you know, you can get alongside them and kind of run for a bit, encourage them. And then you yeah. kind of get off the course. Mm-hmm. So you guys are married. How long have you guys been married? Going on 14 years. Come on, Come on 14 man. years. Come Give on, it up now. in the chat. Oh, my yes. gosh, 14 wow. years. I, I feel like like a little kid. I'm always, like, proud when I tell people, like, eight years, like, 14 years. That's incredible. You made the seven-year mark, so you're good. <laughs> you yeah, and Vanessa are good. Yes. 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 Awesome. All right, I'll take that. So, I, I, so here's the thing I, I, we're learning in our marriage still is that we're still, and, and Oscar, I'm sure you can uh, attest to this as well, you know, we're still individuals, right? And we still are have our own spirit, you know, but we're also together in this journey. Right. And so how have you learned when it's time to, like, run alongside your partner and kind of encourage each other and not ditch them like as you would in the race, but like kind of know like, hey, hey, you know, husband, hey, wife, like I've noticed this. I just want to give you a word. And how has that worked for you guys? Well, even when we run, keep it real. Yeah, I'm gonna keep it real. (laughs) So even when we run together in the physical, she still doesn't ditch me. She'll come back for me. (laughs) So technically, she doesn't really ditch me. She'll come back. Um, (laughs) She laps you. (laughs) She laps me. Yeah, she's a runner. She's so like this. This 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 topic is perfect for her because she's a big runner. Cool. Um, And I just try to keep up. Yeah. Um, I think that. Well, I believe that we both complement each other so well, and that's what's really worked out in our relationship for so long. Nice. Is the fact that I, where I'm weak, she's strong, and where she's strong, I'm weak, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And so um, it's in those moments where we really lean on each other, um, not just what I'm thinking or what I'm seeing, but we come together in prayer. Mm. You know, we know that, you know, the devil could bless as well. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. we need to make sure that what is being blessed What's being given to us is actually from God, right? Yeah. I like yeah, what yeah. Pastor Abe said one day when he was preaching. He said, he said, um, if you rebuke it and it still comes back, then yeah. it's God. Right. Right. And it's <laughs> yeah, so yeah. true. And that's always <laughs> stuck with me. Pastor Abe, 
Thank you so much for that timely that word. <laughs> yeah, so, so we've done that. You know, we, we get together. We pray about it. We don't just say, let's pray, and we mm. don't yeah. pray. We, we come together. We, we get on our hands and our knees. We seek the Lord. We ask for God to confirm, right? Yeah. Mm. And, and the Lord knows I'm terco. I'm stubborn, right? <laughs> so I'm like, God, I'm like, I'm like, Joan, like, like. I'm like Jonah, right? I'm like, Jonah, I, like, I, God, I just need you to confirm, like, multiple times, right? <laughs> like, I don't want to go talk to nah, the Ninevites. Like, no, yo, <laughs> yo, just confirm with me, Lord, please. So, um, and, you know, the beautiful thing about that is that, you know, God doesn't always confirm to me. He'll confirm through my wife. Mm. And at that moment when I hear the Holy Spirit speak through my wife, it's comforting. There's yeah. a comfort to that. Why? Because um, we're in the race together, yeah. right? And really not a race, but more of a marathon, right? And we're sure. taking our time. Uh, during that process, right, honey? I think something <laughs> I would add to that too is that, um, you know, we have moments where you're you're weak and I'm strong, and I'm strong and you're weak, mm. vice versa, right? Yeah. But the other thing, and, and it's so important in a marriage, is to be vulnerable and mm. be willing to be vulnerable in front of each other, and to understand that, um, you know, I'm not attacking his weaknesses and he's not attacking mine. Yeah. But that God brought us together because really we're here to advance his kingdom right and, and we do it more fruitfully when we're in one accord on one page so it, it's also women don't be stubborn like if your <laughs> husband's talking to you don't take criticism you know to the heart like your husband's doing it because he loves you right yeah and husbands do it to their wives you know because they love us so um, just be open, you know. For yeah, that. yeah, yeah. I like the word. All the husbands in the chat are like, amen, yeah. amen, thumbs fire. Up, thumbs, thumbs up, <laughs> put the thumbs up. <laughs> you know, the word submission comes out in the Bible in the book of Ephesians many times, right? Yeah. And we think of the word submission as a bad thing. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. Like wives submit to your husbands, hu husbands submit to your wives, yeah. right? Yeah. But if you really look at that word submission, it's really just to fall in alignment. Mm. It's to fall in agreement with yeah. what God is asking you to do, right? So when we first got married, it was rough. I was like, <laughs> you want me to do what? You what? <laughs> right? Or she would say, you made the decision without asking me. And I thought it was like, well, I need to ask for permission. It really Ooh, wasn't that. Come Let's on. keep it real, right? Let's keep it real. 14 come on. years, come on. Yeah, yeah right? But you <laughs> She's on flashbacks. flashbacks. <laughs> but, you know, I had to really... Um, I had to receive that revelation, mm. but I, you know, and it finally just sunk into my spirit yeah. that yeah. submission was actually agreement, falling into alignment with God's covenant, mm. with the covenant that God yeah. made. So yeah. that's how it's kind of worked out for us. You know? That's inspiring, man. Come on. Come on. Right? You're next. 14 <laughs> years and going strong. <laughs> All right. So the big question on Sunday that Pastor Mark uh, presented on Sunday was how to get, how to get your second win. Mm. And he said to trust God, yeah. period. Trust God, period. And so our three points on Sunday were trust God with your hurt, mm -hmm. trust God with your happiness, and point three was trust God with your heart. And so we're going to mix it up tonight, and normally we kind of go one, two, three, but we're going to kind of mix it up, and we're going to start with point number two, which, which was trust God with your happiness. And he said, because your real joy, peace, and calmness, that's what your happiness is. It's yeah. your real joy, it's your real peace, and it's your calmness. And he, he talked about how we can look into the wrong things to try to get that happiness. Uh, you know, he mentioned face, you know, Facebook and Instagram and how those things really project, like how we're feeling on the inside at times if we're feeling affirmed by people. And so, Oscar, I want to ask you, what does trusting God with your real joy, your peace and calmness look like for you? What does that what does that mean for you? Well, for me, um, that means everything. Um, I've learned to love God and be joyful in the good things and the bad things. Mm. Um, I think that when you learn to do that, um, you're going to make it. Yeah. Um, you know, for example, like the COVID, um, you know, it's sad to hear about people dying and people losing their job. Or, or just, But for us that know how to love God and, and know what the joy of God is, for example, I've never been at so much peace. Mm. And right. that's a peace that I get from the joy of God. And, and I love when the scriptures in Psalms, when it says, you know, the joy, mm. you can't forget the joy. That's, yeah. that's what keeps you going. And when that joy that you feel that you have, you share with others and people be able to take that from you. Yeah. And that's God. That's a yeah, joy yeah, that yeah. comes from God, especially with, with everything going on. That's joy that only yeah, God yeah. can give you. Yeah. yeah. Gloria, I want to ask you the same question. So you, you said you've been coming here now for five years. Um, I mean, I see your, 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 
very committed. You're, you're in, you know, really connect, connected to the church um, here. And so I just want to ask you, like, what feeds that joy for you? Like, what feeds that peace? What feeds that calmness? And how have you learned to be like, that was fickle, you know what I mean? That was temporary, but, like, this is, like, this is solid. This is real, you yeah. know what I mean? This is feeding my soul, not just my flesh. Yeah. Just like I can see the difference in who I was five, seven years ago. Yeah. And like, I mean, that was what I was like 18, 19, like fresh out of high school. Um, mm. So I from like high school and back, I had no connection with God whatsoever. I grew wow. up Catholic. Like okay. my mom sent more in church than we did throughout the week. <laughs> so like, you know, like pulling our ears, telling us to like stop ripping the papers. And <laughs> it was just a mess. But. Honestly, I've never felt true love growing up. I didn't have my father around. I didn't have any male figure that I can trust. Mm -hmm. Um, So being here, I feel like God really blessed me with father figures, more deals, more cousins, more sisters, more brothers. Oh, that's so cool. Home never really felt like home, like a secure home. Sure. So when being at home coffee and saying welcome home, I'm like saying that with yeah. my heart, like because this Come is on. my home. Shout out to home like, coffee. This is Come, where, on. Come on. Yes, this is where I <laughs> met good. my spiritual family, and we pastors talk about it all the time. Where it's like take care of home first, and then serve the right. home of, of yeah. the house of the Lord. Right. So for me, it's backwards. Like teach me how to fix my home here, mm. so that I can set the example at home there. Incredible. Because there they won't get it. Yeah. And I have to like kind of be sure. in between and kind of be liquid. Yeah. And that's the only way that I learn. And so to answer your question is just that joy that, that's feeding my heart and my soul is literally just the love of God. Like mm. my confidence comes in the promises that God has given me that I haven't spoken of that I've journaled about. And like Oscar was saying, you know, the peace that you have during COVID, it's like one thing I was telling my mom, she was freaking out. She's like, oh, there's conspiracy <laughs> theories and the COVID test. It's, yeah, yeah. you know, messing you up. It's making you more vulnerable. I'm like, mom, chill. <laughs> because God made me a promise and it hasn't come yet. Come on. And God doesn't break his promises. Yeah. So Amen. that's where my my confidence is yeah. like God has he has plans for me yeah. and he's not going to forget about Come me on. so I'm chilling <laughs> amen awesome so point number 1 that was point number 2 point number 1 was trust God with your hurt and he said the pain that causes you weariness and he said because pain will not only cause us to worry but then also cause us to become weary and so he also said that when you trust God with our heart or hurt, I'm sorry, he will come and be our healer. Okay. And so, Josh, I'm going to ask you, you know, how long have you been coming to the church now? About 14 years. Wow, come yeah, on. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. So, um, uh, uh, this was actually our honeymoon. Like, our honeymoon was coming to C- Cornerstone Church. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm not that cheap. I'm not that cheap. <laughs> <laughs> it was like... <laughs> She had to bring me here. She had to bring me here first to church Got before she married me. Got <laughs> Just kidding. All right. So, um, how have you learned to trust God after being hurt in church by somebody in the church? Wow. And and I want to ask that because I feel like this is one of the main reasons why people will leave a church yeah. because they've gotten offended. They, they, they've been hurt. Somebody did something, said something. They've mm-hmm. experienced something. Maybe it even happened directly to them, you know, and, and they kind of end up carry that victim mentality. And then they carry that from each yeah. church that they end up going to. And, yeah. and I'm not trying to, to knock anybody for that, but I want to ask this question as, as a form of encouragement. If maybe somebody that's watching tonight is hurting the, from somebody in the church, how have you learned to trust God with that, that hurt specifically? That's a good question. Um, what you're not willing to, to confront, you're not willing to fix. Mm-hmm. Mm. And so, first off, you got to spend some time with in the presence of God, right? Yeah. Because you don't want to speak out of the flesh. Yeah. And so, you know, being in leadership for so long, you know, you, you experience the highs, the lows, the valleys, yeah. the peaks. You know, you guys know already how, yeah, how yeah. that is. But um, not allowing it to to get to your heart. Mm. The Bible says above above all else, right. guard your heart. Guard your heart. And so we need to guard our heart. So That's in good. the moments where you know somebody may say something <laughs> that maybe wasn't right, you mm. you'll never know how what a person is going through until you learn how they walk. Yeah. Mm. Like until you wash their feet, yeah. Then you really won't know what they're going through. Mm. So a lot of times when we encounter people, 
it's, it's, remember, we don't battle against flesh. We battle against what? S spirit, right? Yeah. So, you know, we don't know what their day had, you know, what their day entailed and what they went through and all. So you got to have, there's that little thing called grace. Yeah. Right? When God extends his grace to us, we got to extend it back to others, right? Mm -hmm. So, I, and, and just to kind of wrap it up, it's really not taking it personal. Mm. Yeah. And it's really confronting that. Yeah. Not in a, in a manner where you're confronting it because, you know, you're upset about it. But you're confronting it in a peaceful manner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've noticed in leadership that when I've confronted certain things or individuals that maybe there was something off. Yeah. Conversation that didn't go as, 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 as well planned. Right. Our relationship has always gotten stronger. Absolutely. Always gotten stronger. Yeah, yeah, Why? Yeah. Because the trust factor has gone up higher. Right. I've had, yeah. you know, people come and tell me, man, Josh, thank you so much for coming to me. And like yeah. talking to me, yeah. like that really meant a lot because yeah. man, I've been holding this, yeah. and I'm like, oh man, I didn't even know that. I'm so yeah. sorry, wow. but man, the Holy Spirit just came, told me to come talk to you and and just apologize. And I don't know what I did, but if I did something to offend you or to bother yeah. you, I'm sorry, you know. Yeah. So it's really having that grace, mm. um, with that person, mm -hmm. and just know that look, at the church, you got to remember this is a hospital. Yeah. Right. We're not all perfect here. Gloria, sure. Gloria said that like. We're, we're just willing to be perfected here. Yeah. Yeah. We're not, we're, we're not, you know, we're just trying to get it right. Yeah. You know, we're just trying to we're do it right here. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> we're just here. So, you know, we got to remember that, you know, you know, the ho the church is a, is a hospital for the sick. Yeah. Mm. And, and everybody's sick, you know. Mm -hmm. Some of us just cover it better than others, right? Yeah. But we're all sick. And it's just having that grace and spending time in his presence mm -hmm. to be able to say exactly what God wants you to say when you speak yeah. to that person. And most of the time when that happens, it's usually, like, it's not about you. No. It's, it's mm. something about that person like sure. you said like you don't know what they've been through you don't know what their day was like yeah and he even not not necessarily confronting but being concerned and mm. saying like hey are you okay yeah because yeah, yeah. it's more of like they're they're screaming for help sure. like when they offend or they say something it's kind of like maybe they don't have a filter because they had a bad day so it's more about them than yeah you. yeah absolutely all right, so point number three, and we're going to wrap it up here, it, it was this, to trust God with your heart. Yeah. And so Pastor Mark said here at, at, at our church, we live, we love, and we lead from our heart. And yeah. he said that when you catch your second wind, you will catch a revelation of how to live a life that trusts God. And so, Oscar, I want to ask you, man, in this season of, of there's so much happening right now. And, I mean, you're a husband, you're a parent. Um, you know, you work a, a high-end job, you know, what you do for a living. Um, uh, I don't know if that's the best, better way to describe it, high-end, but you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. um, it, it's very intense. And so I just want to ask you, like, how are you keeping your heart posture to ensure that you're catching fresh revelation? Like, yeah. what, what, how are you that's doing good. that right now? Wow. Well, you know, the, one of the things I've learned, um, you know, in being a husband, and I don't, I'm not, I haven't been married as long as you guys. You guys inspire me. I can't wait to double date with y'all. Okay, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but one of the things I've learned, um, and you know what's funny is, you know, as you get older, you're learning. It's crazy, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and I've learned balance, mm. and it's something that I'm still learning. And it, and even my wife singles out sometimes. How like, hey, maybe you're spending too much time on this or too much time yeah. on that. Mm. So I have to be able to find balance. But the thing that keeps me going, that that that, that I it gets me pumped up is people. Okay. And, and, and that's yeah. one character from Jesus that I took to heart. Mm. And I always felt like if you can love the person next to you, yeah. and if you can love them for reals, you're going to yeah. be a difference maker. And that's yeah, what yeah. keeps me going. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of times people come to church and they're one person in church and one person at home, one person at work. But I'm the same everywhere I go. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm just wild. I'm excited. I love people. <laughs> Um, you know, my customers, millionaires sit at my desk and I invite yeah. them to church. I don't care. Yeah. yeah. And wow. because it's about that. And that's yeah. what keeps me balanced. And, and, and I had to learn after 39 years of life. Yeah. yeah. I finally learned what balance was. That's mm. good. That's good, Oscar. Awesome. Well, thank you guys again so much, Gloria, Oscar, Vanessa, Josh. Thank you, thank you guys so much thank for being you. our thank guests you. tonight. We love you guys. And to all of you guys that are watching here tonight, we want to thank you so much for tuning in every single Wednesday to watch The Breakdown, where we're talking about this past Sunday's message with Pastor Mark, again, a.k.a. The Brown Mamba. We love you. And we want to remind you every Sunday morning at 9 and 11 a.m., you can tune in to watch church online, also at 1 p.m. in Spanish. And then at Sunday night, we have church. 
church at night here in our incredible setup that's being done by our dream team. We shout you out. We love you, dream team. And also the service starts at 5 p.m. for uh, Spanish and then 6.30 in English. We love you and thank you again for watching The Breakdown. Let's go.